Hi everybody, it's Sam from Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to put together the 5x7 version of the slider cards from my new Super Sliders collection. So this is how it will look. You can use the zigzag mats and layers or you can use the plain. You actually get a lot of different mats and layers in this one. And this will create this kind of makeup palette look. So when it folds flat, you've got all your makeup palettes um, kind of colours there and then when you open it, it will reveal your message and you could have a gift card on here you can stamp other you know sentiments it's entirely up to you now also you do get there is a stamp set which is this one here this is the makeup stamp set and you have these palettes here which will stamp for you so if you'd rather have the palette here which I have on a 6x6 version which I'll be sharing on the channel you can stamp and colour them all or if you want to use the dies, then you have them in the die set here. So, you know, whether you prefer stamping or if you prefer die cutting, you can create, you know, a really nice card. You also get the little dropped earrings, you get the eyeshadow little pan palette there, you've got the blush brush, and you've got little perfume bottles, which is what I'm going to do today. So I'm not going to make the actual makeup palette. I'm going to decorate it slightly differently. I just really want to show the mechanism and how it all works. So it can be displayed like this, or if you just fold it up, if that person maybe doesn't have a lot of room, they can also display it just as a top folding card there. And I've just stamped inside, happy birthday. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so the papers I'm using are from the Candy Paper Pads. This is a brand new paper pad within this collection, and I'm using this gorgeous blue here. So you get the blue, plain blue, and then you get the blue foiling, which I've pulled out here. And you can just see just how wonderful that is. I love the gold against that blue. So I'm going to show you exactly what I've die cut, but that's the paper pad. And um, you get all different other foils. Um, you've got that rose gold, which is beautiful. I've used that on a circle card. And then you've got the turquoise against the rose gold there, which looks really nice. You have, again, there's that blue with the gold. And then I think I used the silver on another card. Yeah, I've used both the silvers on other cards, which again, you'll see featured. And also I've taken lots of photos, which are over on my Facebook group as well. So that's the paper pad. So what you want to do, so I'll show you all the dies you get here. So you get 18 dies in this set. And what you want to do, so I've already got my five by seven card blank. Okay, so that's just a shop brought one. If you want to make up your own, you'll need a piece of 10 by seven. And along the 10 inch side, you just want to score at five inches. Fold it in half and you've got your card there. Then what I've done, so you'll see also you have this large die, so you could cut your card shape from that if you want to, or you can have that as your first mat layer. But I've actually gone in and I've done this one here, and I have die cut it, you'll see there, in that lovely foiled striped paper. And then what I've also done is I've cut a piece in white, because I'm using the gold foiling here, I want to do some heat embossing, so you'll see on the glasses and I'll talk you through them in a minute but they've actually been heat embossed using the stamp so because if I was just using a normal ink to stamp I would say you don't need this second piece if you've got a white card base you can just stamp directly onto the card base but because I'm using embossing powder and when you add your heat to your cardstock it's going to warp even if it's you know very hot and you don't keep it on the cardstock for long it will still warp slightly so if you have it on a separate piece you can then attach that piece to here with then this piece over the top. It will all make sense when I put it together in a moment. But that way, your main card blank isn't warped and by sticking it onto that flat piece, it will flatten everything out for you. So again, we'll talk more about that. But if you do want to do heat embossing, then I would suggest that you, you cut this again um, for that to sit over the top, okay? Then I've also cut the mechanism part. So this is the pullout piece. Now, what I mentioned in some of the lives when I was um, doing the demos with this, is it's quite easy to see what part is the mechanism, what part are all your mats and layers. Now you'll see here, all your mats and layers will sit perfectly inside that largest rectangle. These two here, if I take that away, you'll see this one here, this is the mechanism, and it's, a, it's like this across the three sizes, because we've got the six by six square, the six by six circle, and then the five by seven zigzag. And you'll have these three rectangles. The smallest rectangle will always face you, and again, I'll show you that in a moment. But that, looks obscure you know it's not just a standard rectangle and it wouldn't fit correctly in these okay and you'll see there that fits with this one again this is a rectangle but if i was they don't sit properly that one doesn't sit within the, zig the zigzag this one here it doesn't sit properly okay it wouldn't fit within all of that so when you get them if you did ever you know kind of mix them up and you were a bit concerned just lay them all down and the ones that fit perfectly within the large rectangle you know all your mats and layers and your mechanism are those two there and you'll see they fit nicely within each other so what I've gone and done is I've cut this piece here using 
that mechanism. And this is the pull out tab. So this is the one that you could stick a gift card to, we're gonna stamp on and all that kind of stuff. So I'll leave that one there. And then we're gonna need that mechanism. So I'll take that one out now. And then what I've also gone and done is I've cut these pieces, which will make, make a bit more sense when I actually cut the mechanism. But these are these smallest mats and layers here. And that's what I'm gonna build up my kind of little pop-up piece. And it's gonna have these glasses with the glamour and everything on them there, okay? So first of all, you wanna grab your nice pattern piece that you've cut using whatever the die is you chose. Like I said, I've chose this zigzag. And we're gonna sit our mechanism inside here. Now, you want it to be closer to the, the bottom part than to the top, but what's gonna happen is this will be behind here, and then we'll be able to pull that up like so, okay? And we have a little pull, finger pull, actually. Let me take that off, it's this one here. And it's this little kind of arrow shape so that it will fit within these zigzags and it just keeps everything looking nice and neat and tidy. Now, when you do lay this down, you wanna make sure that you've got a tape that's gonna fit. So I've got a couple of sizes here. So if I bring this down, you need to make sure that you can get a tape that runs along the bottom there and then obviously up the sides. And I've just been finding this thin one here, which is not, and um, it's one eighth of an inch, works really, really well. But also if you've got any of your kind of precision nib glue applicators here, you can get a very thin bead and you'd be able to put a thin bead of glue around there as well. But with the liquid glue, just be careful because you don't want to kind of, once it sticks together and it spreads out, you don't want it to interfere with the mechanism. So just a little few kind of little tips there, just things to kind of look out for when you're putting these cards together. So I've got some tape here. I'm just gonna take some of the stickiness off because I'm using the foil paper here. Um, you know, anything sticky on it, you peel it away, it might lift it. But what I've also been saying is when you do kind of tack this in place, or you might have a magnetic shim that will, you know, usually hold the dies, always stick anything within that middle rectangle. So you've got your bottom, middle and top, because this one is the one that you're gonna cover. So if you were to kind of lift any of the pattern or the paper, it's not going to matter because you're gonna cover it. So I've just put a little piece there. And then I'm just gonna grab another piece of tape. Again, just remove some of that stickiness. And I'm gonna add this piece. Now, it will sit within the center kind of mountain there. So you've got all these valleys and mountains. That middle one is where you want to sit that. Now it's up to you how kind of high up you have it. You can have it overhanging, you can have it really far down. I'm gonna have it about there. And you wanna make sure, if I turn it over, it's just gonna cut, you can see the cut lines there. So you wanna sit that so that it's gonna cut right within those valleys, either side. And if you're a little bit off, you can always snip it. So don't, you know, again, don't worry too, too much, but just try your best to get that in the middle there. And again, I'm just gonna hold that in place. So now that's all ready for me to run through my die machine and cut. Okay, so that cut like butter, the actual finger pull has fallen out completely and you can see now where that is cut down really nicely within that section there, okay? And then I'm just going to peel this away carefully, like so. And because I took a lot of the stickiness off, actually it's not lifted any of that cardstock at all. And if you've got any low tack washi tapes as well, you know, all that kind of stuff works. So now we've got our mechanism. Okay, so you'll see it's cut three sides, but it's stayed attached, and then it's left you these score lines. So the one furthest away from you, you want to fold so it creates a valley fold. The one closest, the, the middle one then becomes a mountain, and then the one closest to you becomes a valley. So what you will have is this effect, and you can see there where we've got that slider, okay? And then that will now, if you want, using embossing powder, that would go onto here, and then you could just move it up and we'll stamp you know, within the space. But because I'm gonna be doing some heat embossing, I'm now gonna bring this piece in and I'm gonna line this up over the top perfectly. Okay, don't worry about the finger pull bit there or anything, because you're gonna, that will be hidden. So lay it down so it does, because you're gonna match this up when you stick it onto the card as well. Okay, like so, I've got a pencil and you're just gonna move this up about halfway if you want it higher up. You can go quite far back with this. So you've got quite a lot of space there to be able to stamp, you know, do the, the little palette if you want to do that. It's entirely up to you. But I'm going to have it about halfway. I've got a sentiment that I'm going to stamp here. And I'm just going to mark the pencil mark very lightly so you can rub it out. Just the four sides so that when you take it away you can see there where you want to stamp your sentiment. Okay, and then I'm going to stamp my message. So for this one here... I'm gonna have the Glamour die, which I'll again talk about that in a moment. That's gonna come out the top. So I think I'm just gonna have 
Hello Fabulous. Um, or I may have, where's the other one that I like? Oh, you don't look a day over fabulous because there's the glasses. So I think I'm gonna use that one. And then there's the little stars, which I've used a lot because they're great little fillers. But you've got the XOXO. This is the makeup again, that stamp set, which is where I've used the glasses. So what I've done is I stamped the glasses and then heat embossed them. And then in the matching die set here, so these two work together, you've got the die there to cut them out. Or you could just cut them in gold cardstock and they would look really nice. And then I just cut them again in a gold mirrored card and then paper pieced it so that they've, you know, the actual kind of the lens there, you know, they've got that gold on them. So I think that sentiment will go quite well. But like I said, I've got the hearts here. So I'm going to pull those out and I've got the stars. And you've got the lips. Let's do that as well. So I'm just going to prep the area there to so just make sure you get all of the any kind of oils any static little powder pouch there will work really well and then I'm just gonna ink up my sentiment and lay that one down there perfect and then let's do the lips and then Maybe I'll leave the hearts, but just use the stars just to fill in a couple of little areas. Let's do there, there, and there. I think that will do. Okay, then I've got some gold embossing powder here. There we go, that looks perfect. I think I'm a little bit crooked with my sentiment, but <laughs> I can live with that. I think it'll be fine. So now the key to heat embossing is you want to heat this up for a good 30, 40 seconds before you apply. You want that to be piping hot so that it will instantly melt that embossing powder and it will therefore mean that you're not having the heat on the card for that long. You're literally going on, instantly melting it and then moving it along the card and then taking it off. The less time this has actually on the cardstock, the less warping you'll get. Okay, so now I've got my heat embossed sentiment and there's a little bit of warping, can you see just there? But that will easily flatten once we then stick it onto our card blank and I'm gonna use the Kalau glue as well because that will really help it. So next we can stick this down into the center of the card blank. Now because we've got the zigzag, I'm just gonna pop it all on there and then I'm just gonna go in just not really squeezing the glue, I'm just moving the glue I'd already popped down just up into those little kind of points just so that that all sticks down as well. A little bit more in the middle there. Again, make sure the card's opening the right way. And I can just, I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit because you want your pull tab to sit at the top there, like so. And then I'm just gonna flip it over and just hold that in place and it will completely flatten out again. And it's just a really good way to be able to do that heat embossing, but without it, you don't want a rocky card, especially with anything that's got a mechanism because it's just gonna interfere with that and not you know, allow it to slide so freely. Okay, so that's now all ready for this to go back over the top and we're gonna put our pull tab in between there as well. You can see that sentiment will reveal when we lift it, so it looks really nice. So I also just want to do a little bit of heat embossing on this one. Now in the sentiment um, set, you have a little die here that's got your pull. So I'm going to take that one out and I'm just going to just put a little bit of the powder along the top there. And then what you want to do is sit this one. Now the bottom of this, the very edge of this needs to line up with the bottom of that piece, you see there, just popping it in. And you wanna make sure that you've got an even amount. So it should hit the very first valley. See my pull piece is just sitting, just in there. And you wanna make sure that it's nice and flush with the flat part there, the bottom. And then you can see where you need to stamp your pull. So again, just touch that. So I'm just gonna go back over. All the powder rubs off, so don't worry about that. And then I'm just going to pop my pull a little bit of my Versa mark on there and then I'm just going to stamp my pull, there we go, and I can take that away. I'm going to add some that's already on the, 
paper there. Tap off the excess and now I'm just going to heat set that. Okay, so that's all done. I've also cut a white piece, stuck it on the back again, just to give it that strength. And also if you've done any heat embossing, it's not going to warp. And then I've got this Glamour. Now, if you're going to put a gift card in here, then on this section, then you won't need to do this piece, but I'm going to just have mine pop up and it's going to have Glamour. So I've just got my glue here and I'm just going to cover this. If you've got any double-sided sticky sheets and you could die cut it using that so the whole thing's a sticker because obviously these are quite delicate but they give such a nice effect and um, they suit this collection having these kind of nice joined up script and then I'm just going to lay that one down there like so and then we're going to flip this over and you want to add some tape to this bottom one here okay so just that smallest rectangle at the bottom of that mechanism. That's where you want to put your tape first. And then we're going to take the backing off and you're going to sit it. Now what you can do is line it up with your pull because you know that that's in place and then line up. So if you kind of bring up this and then you can line up the bottom, line up your pull tab, pull word, that's what I mean. You can see you want that to run flush with the bottom. So if you lift that piece up as you stick that down, it'd be easy to do. And now you can see how that's going to work. Okay, next flip it over and you can see the space you have for your tape. So I know this thin tape will fit around here, but like I said, if you have got one of these, you can get a very thin bead and you can go in all the little zigzags here and you can stick it down that way if you want. But I'm just going to use this tape here. Okay, like so, and then again, just take the backing off. And then all you need to do is line this up with that white zigzag piece. So I'm just going to pop that side down. Run it along the bottom. And then just finish along the side there. Okay, and then you've got your pull tab, so you just pull it up and it will reveal your lovely message there and that glamour or a gift card, which looks really nice as well. So now I just want to finish it off and it will all fit into your envelope with some decoration here. So I'm going to add some glue to this middle rectangle. You don't want to put anything on the bottom one. You can use double-sided tape here if you want, but I'm just going to use this. It's a bit quicker, plus it's very strong, so it will just strengthen the card. And then I've cut two of these again, just gives it a bit of strength, because this is a paper in the paper pad, so it, it works on its own anyway, but I'm going to sit that one. It will sit perfectly within the width of that mechanism piece. So again, if I now pull that up, so you don't want to make sure you don't stick anything on this piece. It's just got to go on that section, and then you've got that free. All right. And test it as well, because if it goes past that score line, it's just going to ruin the whole thing. It's just not going to work. And then I've got this one here, which is going to be my layer to go over the top. So I'm just going to lay that one down like so. And then with the glasses, I've already put some foam on the backs there so they can go in the center. And then I have cut the earrings. I'm actually going to probably add some pearls to these and you can stick all of these little embellishments around the bottom. So I'm going to just add a few more bits to them and you'll see that in a moment. And I'm also going to just heat emboss the happy birthday sentiment here. You've also got hello beautiful, fabulous friend, life is short by the shoes, glamorous friend. There are so many. In fact, I might do the glamorous friend because it says glamour and then it says you don't look a day over and then inside I'm going to have the happy birthday. So I'm going to get all of that done and then I'll show you the finished card. Okay, so there is the finished card. So you can see I've just heat embossed the glamorous friend sentiment and just stuck that on the side there. I've also gone and die cut the kind of just well I die cut it again in the glitter white card, but then I just cut each piece out so you still see the gold underneath and it's just a really nice addition. I just love those little earrings. You can see closer up there your perfume bottles and then again you just pull your tab and it will reveal your lovely sentiment. That die at the top there so it can be as I mentioned before displayed like this or if you slide all that back down 
you open up the card and then inside I've just embossed the happy birthday. Use some of that blue paper so it keeps everything matching and then it can display, be displayed like so. I think it looks lovely. And then there's that one again to give you that other look using all of the kind of makeup palette dies there to create that look and you can see the the matte layer is bigger I've added another piece whereas this one I've just used that one there and the smaller one so there's you know there's lots of ways to build this together and um, you know create your own styles really so I love them I think they're really really good they're really fun and I like that they fit into that five by seven envelope so thank you for watching I hope that helps you know those that have purchased this die set um, how to put it together and I'll be sharing more tutorials in the future so thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.